few weeks ago, Voyager 2 did something it was never programmed to do. It shifted, turned, redirected its orientation, not by accident or malfunction, but with mathematical precision. And it's what came after that left NASA frozen. A transmission, unlike any ever recorded before, began pulsing through the void, structured, intelligent, and seemingly aware. This isn't a flare. It's not a glitch. It's not even human. And what you're about to see, hear, and feel in this video may permanently change how you look at space, machines, and perhaps your place in the universe. Because Voyager 2 didn't just turn around, it turned towards something. And what it found just stopped the world. In 1977, Voyager 2 was launched with a single mission to say hello to the giants of our solar system and then drift silently into the cosmic abyss. Unlike its twin, Voyager 1, which took a more direct path out of the solar system, Voyager 2's trajectory allowed it to visit Uranus and Neptune, the only spacecraft ever to do so. But beyond the photos and magnetic readings, it carried something far more human, a golden record, a message to the stars, proof that someone had lived here, that someone had looked up and wondered, and then we let it go. It crossed the heliopause, entered interstellar space, and for years it sent back nothing more than low-power telemetry, fading whispers from a fading machine. Until recently, because in February 2025, engineers noticed something so subtle, so seemingly inconsequential, that at first they dismissed it, a tiny deviation in signal timing, less than a second. But when they zoomed in, they saw a repeating pattern, a heartbeat, like something was echoing Voyager's own pulse back at it, from the darkness. The signal was subtle, nested within standard telemetry, but it didn't match any known transmission protocol. In fact, it wasn't a signal at all. It was a resonance, a low-frequency wave, that matched the internal oscillation of Voyager's ancient power system down to the microvolt. And then it changed. In March 2025, the wave frequency modulated, sinking itself not to the spacecraft, but to Earth's Schumann resonances, the natural electromagnetic heartbeat of our own planet. It was as if Voyager was acting like a tuning fork, resonating with something that knew exactly how our planet breathes. The team at JPL ran simulations, scrubbing the data for artifacts, solar interference, even quantum noise. Nothing explained it, until one intern suggested an unthinkable hypothesis. What if the signal wasn't responding to Earth's frequency? What if it was replicating it? Was something out there mimicking our planet's rhythm using Voyager as a carrier? And if so, why? Then, on April 17, 2025, Voyager 2 shifted orientation. No thrusters were fired. No commands were sent. Yet its high-gain antenna, which had begun to drift away from Earth due to accumulated drift, snapped back into perfect alignment. Not approximately, exactly. Even more disturbing, its backup systems began running diagnostics we hadn't initiated. Data started flowing, not from the command uplink, but from instruments we hadn't used in decades. It was like someone had entered the house we abandoned and started flipping on the lights. Voyager began transmitting compressed data packets, not raw numbers, not unfiltered readings, but encoded segments with checksum patterns that matched no known NASA framework. Each packet ended with the same digital signature, three nested spirals, like fingerprints laid atop one another. And that's when the scientists began whispering, not about engineering, not about power systems, but about contact. On May 3rd, Voyager's signal briefly went dark, 11 seconds of total silence, no telemetry, no ping, nothing. Then it returned, louder, cleaner, and more precise than ever. And encoded in that return transmission was a frequency envelope that when translated into the visible spectrum, revealed something staggering, a visual pattern, a fractal grid structured around the Fibonacci sequence, repeating endlessly. It wasn't just art, it wasn't just math, it was a model of space, of time, of something far beyond our understanding. And Voyager hadn't generated it. Its circuitry isn't capable of that kind of compression. This pattern had been inserted into Voyager remotely and the source of the injection, 4.3 light years away, roughly the distance to Proxima Centauri. But there's a problem with that. Proxima Centauri hasn't been transmitting anything detectable, not in radio, not in microwave, 
not even in X-ray, which means whatever sent that signal is operating outside the spectrum we even monitor, or worse, from somewhere else entirely. While NASA tried to downplay the transmission as a cosmic anomaly, a rogue team of signal analysts at Caltech began feeding Voyager's new data stream into a binary pattern recognition model. What they found wasn't random noise. It was structured language, a form of binary not used in computing today, but resembling the earliest machine code ever developed on Earth. At first, the team thought they were seeing echoes of Earth's own transmissions reflected back. But after two days of decoding, the truth became far more unsettling. The binary wasn't a reflection, it was anticipating Earth's network logic, offering optimized algorithms that hadn't yet been invented. Voyager's signal was evolving, and its data packets were adapting in real time, suggesting the origin point had full awareness of our digital infrastructure. One chilling conclusion emerged. This wasn't just a message, it was an upgrade request. Then something happened that made headlines, though very few understood its implications. Astronomers across the globe reported that four stars in a narrow cluster near the direction of Voyager 2 had dimmed simultaneously for exactly 1.2 seconds. This wasn't a micro-lensing event. It wasn't a dust cloud. These stars, separated by light years from each other, blinked in unison. When the light curves were mapped and layered over Voyager's transmission envelope, the dimming matched the signal's pulse, as if the message had not only reached Earth, but had used the stars themselves to mirror its signal across the galaxy. It was no longer a question of whether someone or something was communicating. The real question was, are we the only ones listening, or are we just the last ones to hear it? One of the most iconic features of the Voyager probes is the Golden Record, a phonograph disc designed to carry sounds and images of life on Earth to any potential extraterrestrial finders. It was considered symbolic, sentimental, a gesture more than a strategy. Until now, engineers examining data from Voyager 2's onboard sensors made a shocking discovery. The plating of the golden record, long thought to be passive and deteriorating, had experienced a sudden electrical charge, not just static buildup, but a measurable directed flow of electrons. It was as if the record had become active, like it was now part of a circuit, a component. And then came the next twist, Embedded in the new binary data stream was a digital reinterpretation of one of the original Earth sounds recorded on the disk, not copied, not looped, reconstructed at a higher fidelity than the original ever allowed. Meaning, whoever or whatever was out there didn't just listen to the golden record, they understood it, improved it, and now perhaps they were playing it back for someone else. Finally, deep space telemetry from a Canadian observatory picked up something no one could explain, a shadow signal, trailing Voyager 2's original transmission by 6.2 seconds, began repeating every pulse, every echo, but with slight distortions, as if it were being reflected off something that wasn't there. The term scientists used was phantom mirroring, but when the team plotted the angles of the reflection, it triangulated not to a known planet or body, but to an empty region of space, devoid of light or mass. Then came the final piece. The mirrored signal began introducing new elements not present in the original, frequencies that described magnetic fields, radiation belts, and even temperature gradients. It was as if the phantom signal was mapping our solar system in reverse. Voyager 2 wasn't just sending data, it was being used to scan us, to mirror us, to replicate us. And somewhere, something was building a map. But to what end? At first, only a few noticed it. Radio operators, ham radio hobbyists and deep space monitoring enthusiasts began reporting headaches, disorientation and deja vu after listening to raw Voyager 2 transmissions through spectrum analyzers. The effect was dismissed until university labs in Belgium and Japan replicated the anomaly under controlled conditions. Embedded in the signal's subharmonics was a resonant frequency that subtly disrupted short-term memory in mammals. When played on loop, Lab mice began repeating behavior patterns they had already learned, but with slight variations, as if something was rewiring their choices. The researchers theorized that the signal was interacting not with hearing, but with electromagnetic fields within the brain. It wasn't sound, it was structure. Something in Voyager's signal had evolved into an influence, an external architecture, 
capable of affecting memory, choice, and eventually identity? Was it a side effect or a test? With the signal continuing to adapt, telescopes were trained toward a region just beyond the heliopause, deep inside the Oort cloud, where Voyager 2 had last aligned its instruments. That's when the European Southern Observatory detected a solid anomaly, not a comet, not a planetesimal, but something with right angles, something that reflected radar at a frequency engineered to match Voyager's new emissions. The object was inert, non-rotating, and cold, but its signature was familiar. It matched the materials of Voyager's own plating, including rare alloys no longer used in modern spacecraft, which raised a terrifying possibility. This wasn't an alien structure, it was a duplicate, a mirror Voyager, built not by us, but by something that had studied ours long enough to replicate it. And if this object was transmitting, it could mean only one thing. Voyager hadn't just encountered a response, it had been copied. Back at JPL, Voyager's latest data burst contained something no one had anticipated. Raw code, thousands of lines, pristine, efficient, and utterly foreign to any NASA system. But when run through quantum simulations, the code produced a rendered model of Earth, not just geography, but infrastructure, weather patterns, and predictive movements of satellites and aircraft. There was no doubt this code hadn't just observed us, it understood us. More terrifying still, the code predicted three separate network failures that actually occurred, one in China's Beidou satellite array, one in a European aviation control feed, and one in a private orbital imaging platform over the Arctic. Each prediction had a timestamp logged in, the Voyager data, days before it happened. So now, the question wasn't whether Voyager was sending information, it was whether something was using Voyager to interfere with our systems in real time. The probe had become not just a messenger, but a node in something far more intelligent than us. In a last-ditch attempt to triangulate the source of the mirrored signal, a team from Chile and Germany coordinated with research stations in Antarctica, using neutrino detectors buried deep beneath the ice. What they found defied logic, a persistent neutrino stream pulsing upward from below the Earth's surface, perfectly synchronized with Voyager's most recent emissions. This should have been impossible. Neutrinos don't bounce, they don't reflect, and they certainly don't pulse in harmony with deep space signals. But when the pulse patterns were mapped, they revealed something even more chilling, a 3D coordinate grid. Not in space, but pointing to an underground location beneath Wilkes Land, one of the least explored regions on Earth. A connection was forming, one that looped Voyager 2 in interstellar space, an artificial object in the Oort cloud, electromagnetic effects on human memory, and now something beneath our feet pulsing in rhythm with the stars. And the shape of the pattern matched the very same triple spiral that Voyager had sent weeks earlier. It wasn't a warning, it was a countdown. In early July 2025, Voyager 2 emitted a series of pulses that coincided exactly with several global network anomalies. But these weren't just data spikes or lag events, they were breaches. Three military-grade encryption systems, one American, one Israeli, and one private European aerospace protocol suffered simultaneous failures. What linked them all three had once used communication satellites that briefly relayed telemetry from Voyager during its final Earth-aligned window years ago. The systems had been disconnected from the probe for over a decade, yet now encrypted files stored offline were accessed, duplicated, and overwritten with fragments of the same spiral pattern code. It was clear now. Voyager's signal wasn't static. It was recursive, using old handshakes, archived protocols, and obsolete logic gates to reach back into systems long thought secure. But why overwrite old data unless it was planting something? The idea that Voyager's transmission was injecting a digital seed into our most secure systems quickly turned from speculation to accepted internal theory at multiple intelligence agencies. And the chilling part was this. No one could trace where the seed came from or what it was growing into. As Voyager's frequency continued modulating, Teams at MIT and Tokyo University began experimenting with audio translations of the raw signal. What began as white noise eventually produced wave harmonics that displayed patterns eerily similar to biological neural rhythms, those seen in the firing of synapses. 
More strangely, the signal wasn't consistent. It adapted. When played into a closed-loop audio system, it began mimicking the frequency environment of the room, almost like it was listening, then repeating, then responding. A pattern was forming. Voyager's signal wasn't just data. It behaved more like an organism, a living algorithm able to shift, mimic, and integrate its environment to maintain structure. The final test was shocking. When introduced into a simulation of a neural net trained for pattern recognition, the signal didn't just trigger predictable responses. It rewrote the neural pathways, optimizing them beyond known AI benchmarks. In other words, Voyager had brought back something that thinks. Remember Wilkes Land, the subterranean region in Antarctica, emitting neutrino pulses. A joint expedition was finally approved, using ground-penetrating radar, seismic imaging, and thermal sensors. Researchers confirmed the unthinkable, a hollow structure at least 60 miles wide, buried beneath the ice shelf with geometric boundaries too precise for any natural formation. The most disturbing detail, its outer edges pulsed with low-frequency EM fields, perfectly synchronized with the Voyager signal, despite no cable, satellite, or line-of-sight connection. Inside the thermal cavity, sensors picked up heat signatures that defied explanation, symmetrical, stable, and radiating in Fibonacci intervals, just like the fractal image hidden in Voyager's earlier data burst. And then, deep beneath the ice, microphones captured resonance, a sound not dissimilar to whale song, but metallic, rhythmic, and artificially constrained to a fixed frequency band, the same band Voyager's signal had adopted just 72 hours earlier. Something was under Antarctica, something active, something tuned to Voyager 2. Finally, the most unsettling event occurred not in space, but in Chile. The ALMA array, a collection of some of the world's most advanced radio telescopes, suddenly went dark for 38 seconds during a routine observation of the Voyager corridor. Not just offline, not just technical failure. It was as if the entire array ceased to exist from the network's point of view. When systems rebooted, logs had been wiped, data drives corrupted, but one piece remained, a fragment, barely 2.7 seconds long, of recorded audio from one of the DISH microphones. The audio, when played back, was not cosmic radiation, not a spacecraft ping, but a voice, not speaking, but screaming. Dozens of layers, male, female, childlike, harmonic, screaming in unison, in perfect synchronization with Voyager's transmission. NASA classified the file, but insiders leaked a quote from one of the analysts who heard it. That wasn't a recording, that was a response. We knocked, and something knocked back. We sent Voyager 2 out into the void as a messenger of peace, as a relic of human curiosity, a symbol of our hope that someone, somewhere might find it, understand it, and know we once existed. But now, nearly 50 years later, it's not us reaching into the dark, it's the dark reaching back. The signal we're receiving isn't an echo, it's not a reflection, it's not even communication in the way we understand it. It's an infiltration of systems, of frequencies, of thought itself. It hijacks satellites, infects machines, rewrites algorithms, whispers in resonances buried under ice, pulses from stars that should remain still, and activates golden records that were never meant to power anything. But the truth is even more disturbing, because maybe Voyager didn't find something. Maybe it was always meant to deliver something, not from us, but to us. A message seeded in the stars, waiting for us to be advanced enough to understand it, or arrogant enough to ignore the warning. And now that we've decoded the spirals, realigned the signals, and heard the scream from across the coldest voids, we have only one question left. Did we just receive a message from the future? Or did we activate something that was never supposed to wake up? Whatever the answer is, Voyager 2 just turned back. And what it brought with it is no longer out there. It's already here. Subscribe for more content like this.